Hey everyone, uh, nice to see you. Um, today our topic is how to do grassroots field strategy. And my guest is Elizabeth Juveler from New Jersey 11th for Change. And her group was responsible for bringing about the early retirement of Representative Rodney Freelingheisen. They're a very active group. I'm gonna hand it over to Elizabeth. The first thing that we needed to do was kind of decide what we were going to be capable capable of. And we are a group that has members all over the district. We have 54 towns. New Jersey has all these little towns next to each other. Um, and most of those 54 towns are represented in a town team or three or four towns together in a town team. And we're pretty well covered. So we thought that they would be a very reasonable uh, a way to structure our field campaigns because we're just mm -hmm. all volunteers like mm -hmm. probably most people watching this so we acquired a list of voters mm -hmm. and so that's addresses and ages and ethnicity and address and phone number if they have it and and very specifically how often they voted and what uh, party affiliation they have if any so there's lots of ways to get a list you can buy it as we did it costs uh, depending on where you go it's maybe some thousands of dollars so it's a fundraising thing if you can swing it or maybe there's a deep pocket uh donor who could you know do that one thing if you're lucky enough to have that but you can also get them if you have relationships with your local party or a campaign that's underway that wants to use your energy as part of their field so we got we got the we got the database, and um, and then we divided it into into really four groups for now. And um, the first group, and, and there are sort of four activities that go with it. So the first group are the people who vote all the time. So there are people who never miss an election. If they're kids, not so many of those. Maybe a couple hundred in our whole district who voted every single time since they could register eighteen and. 19 and 20, um, but mostly it's older people who never miss. And so we're calling them. We, each town then gets the list of all of the 100% voters in their town, and they're calling them right now to get more volunteers because these are people you don't have to convince to go to the polls at all. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to we're trying to bring them in. So that's that's people who like to phone call. That's your neighbors that you're calling. Oh, I live on this street. You're around the corner. We're working on this. We're having a meeting at Starbucks or whatever. Mm -hmm. On Thursday, well, why don't you come? All your neighbors are there. The second list in the opposite direction is um, reluctant voters. So people who are registered as Democrats in this case, who vote sometimes, but not very much, like maybe in one presidential election and then missed all the statewide elections and the midterms, and maybe they've even missed a, another presidential election. Mm -hmm. So those people are going to take some massaging. I don't know if you can hear my dog whining in the background. <laughs> Good. So, um, and we have all of these people. And then we have um, groups all over the country, California, New York, Massachusetts, who don't have um, a race necessarily on their own, who've decided to help us out. So this is perfect. We give them lists of 150 or 200 of these reluctant voters, and they have their own postcard parties, so they get a bottle of wine or whatever it is, and postcards from blank postcards from post office, and write this message with the dates of the election. Hey, it's so important. We're all counting on you. Your neighbors are turning up. This is the year not to miss. It's going to be great. And they'll get maybe multiple postcards. We have about 35,000 people in the district that are reluctant voters. Mm. So... We'll, I, I'm pretty confident that with, among all of our friends and all of our all of our allies around the country, we'll be able to get them written to. Mm -hmm. The middle group are the real target for us right now. So that's voters who vote most of the time, but not all of the time. And we just really want to make sure they don't miss this year. Register Democrats again. So each town has those lists, and then they're cut up into kind of big chunks, like 200 maybe. And for a town that has a lot of volunteers, that 
list of 200 called the turf is going to be one person's responsibility for the rest of the year. And maybe they'll have two or three chirps if they're really ambitious and energetic. And that doesn't mean they're going to knock on all those doors themselves until November, but they're going to make sure that those turfs get divided up by 20 or 30 houses on a weekend or something, and that other people are going to knock on those doors. So our message as we're going out now to these voters is, hey, did you know that there's an election? This is a really big year. It's going to really matter. Democrats are, are winning in the district. You might have heard that it's a Republican district. It's not. We just actually had a, a governor, our Democratic governor, Phil Murphy, won our district by the skin of his teeth, but won nonetheless. So people having that message is really encouraging. That knocking mm -hmm. on your neighbor's door is literally the most effective way to get turnout. It really is. And it might be uncomfortable, and maybe, yes, your neighbor's going to be a little annoyed. They will vote. Even if they're annoyed, they will vote. If you knock on their door and you say, hey, I'm your neighbor, it's so important. We all need to be voters. The voters are coming.